We've gone ahead and have drawn the circuit based on the given description. We have the first battery with an internal resistance of 0.255 ohms. We have the second battery with internal resistance 0.153 ohms. And then we have this lamp with its own value of resistance that we've marked R. We have also arbitrarily drawn in a current and we chose to draw the current traveling in this clockwise direction. So the current is traveling clockwise through the loop at all sections of the loop. So we could even draw the current up here label that I, maybe draw it one more time over here and label that I. So there is the circuit and our first task is to determine the value of R, the resistance of the lamp. And to do that, we have to apply one of Kirchhoff's laws. And in particular, we're going to use the so-called loop rule, which states that the sum of the potential differences across the elements around any closed circuit must be zero. So that's kind of a mouthful and to get us started with understanding the loop rule, let's put down a couple of additional rules. What we have drawn here is a resistor and we've drawn in a current arbitrarily flowing to the right. Now let's say we're moving through the loop and let's say we were moving in the same direction as the current. We will see this in just a moment. Now if you're moving in the same direction as the current, then your potential change will be a negative and then you take the resistance value and multiply that by the current. So that is how we will monitor a potential change when traveling through a resistor in the same direction as the current. As for this battery here, if we are moving from the negative to the positive terminal of the battery, that's going to be a positive potential change. So we will signify that with a plus and then we'll just insert the voltage value of that particular battery. So these are two very important rules to understand as we go through the loop. Let's grab our circuit and begin to actually traverse the loop. Now, when you traverse a loop, you can select any arbitrary starting point. For example, we can start right here in front of the negative terminal of the battery, and we can also move in either direction. We can go in sort of an anti-clockwise direction or a clockwise direction. We'll choose to go clockwise in this case, although it wouldn't matter. So just imagine that you're starting at that red dot and you're kind of moving your way in a clockwise direction through the loop. Now, as you move through the loop, you have to keep track of all the potential changes that you encounter. So for example, starting at the red dot, encountering this battery first, we are going from the negative to the positive terminal. As stated, that potential change will be a positive voltage. So in this case, it'll be a positive 1.5 volts. That is our first potential difference or potential change. Continuing through the loop, we move along until we encounter the resistor down here. And notice we are moving in the same direction as the current. Recall that the current is traveling on the lower section of the loop to the left. We are also moving to the left on our loop circuit here. The rules state that if you're moving in the same direction as the current, then you're going to have a negative potential change. We'll have a minus, and then you take the resistance and then multiply that by the current. The question states the current is 0.6 amps. Moving along through the loop, we make a turn over here and then we're up in the upper left corner. Now again, the current is flowing in the same direction as the direction in which we are moving. So we're gonna have a negative potential change. It'll be minus, and then you'll have the resistance value of 0.255 ohms, and that'll be multiplied by the current of 0.6 amps. Next, we encounter the battery. We're moving to the right. It's from negative to positive terminal. That'll be a positive potential change. So positive one and a half volts once again. And then finally, we encounter this final internal resistance. The current is still traveling to the right. We are still traveling to the right. So we have a negative potential change. It'll be 0 0.153 ohms multiplied by the current of 0.6 amps. We have returned to the red dot, our starting point, and therefore the loop rule states we can set these potential differences equal to zero. Very good. Now we're going to solve for R. And perhaps we can do that by picking up our calculator and simplifying all of these values here. And when we do that, we get 1.2552 volts. We'll fill in the rest of the equation. Next, we can combine like terms. Let's add these two volts together. We have 2.7552 volts. Very good, we're solving for the resistance very nicely here. We're gonna go ahead and to both sides, we will add this value R times 0.6 amps. Make sure we do this on both sides. This cancels it out on the left-hand side, of course. So now to finish off solving for R, we're just going to divide both sides of this equation by the 0.6 amps. 
This cancels it out on the right hand side and our final answer is going to be about 4.59. We have calculated a resistance so the unit is ohms. This would be the correct answer to part A of the question. So we have completed the loop rule. Let's go back and see what part B is looking for. And it says, what fraction of the power dissipated is dissipated in the batteries? So to understand that, let's take a look at the circuit again. And the first task for us would be to calculate the total power delivered by the batteries. Now, we might know an equation for power. We might know that power in general is equal to a current multiplied by an EMF or a voltage, if you prefer. And so for the batteries, we'll notice that they are in series. And so because they're in series, we can actually calculate the total power by adding the two volts together. Series batteries have additive voltages. So now all we have to do is take the current of 0.6 amps and then multiply that by the sum of the voltages. Now one and a half volts plus one and a half volts, of course, is three volts. So when we multiply these out, we're going to get a total power delivered by the batteries of 1.8, and then this would be in watts. Now, that's great, but we have to figure out of that 1.8 watts, how much of it was dissipated by the internal resistance of the batteries. Notice again, if you look at the pictures, each battery has its own internal resistance, and it is the internal resistance that is dissipating some of the 1.8 watts worth of power. So we need to calculate those as well. Maybe we can do that on the side, and perhaps we can call this a power loss. Now in this case, we're gonna switch equations and we're gonna use I squared times resistance. Now because the batteries are in series, of course, as stated, we can make their resistances additive. You might remember that in series, the resistances are additive. So we would take the resistance of battery one and add it to the resistance of battery two. We take the current that's flowing through each battery, the 0.6 amps, don't forget to square it, and then multiply that by the sum of the resistances. So we'll have 0.255 ohms plus 0.153 ohms. Let's pick up our calculators and crunch that down. That turns out to equal about 0.147 watts. And now to get the fraction of power dissipated, we would simply divide these. So in other words, we're going to do the power lost divided by the power total and this will give us that fraction. So here we go. We'll keep the color coding. We'll go 0.147 watts divided by the 1.8 watts. This turns out to equal about 0.0817. If you want that as a percent, you could multiply by 100 and you would get about 8.17%. So about 8% of the total power delivered by the battery is dissipated in the form of heat through the internal resistance of those batteries.